What's going on, everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now, and today we're going to talk about the subject about why people still continue to move to Arizona in spite of all of the crazy things that are going on in the world, in spite of all the crazy things that are going on here in Arizona with the uh, spike and uh, everything, and people just keep coming here. And what are those reasons? If you got any ideas, drop them in the comments below, but I'm going to go over the ones that I've discovered are the reasons why people keep moving here. And this has been going on for years now, but you would have thought things would have slowed down. And that's what everyone had anticipated. Well, a lot of people had anticipated that at some point the Arizona housing market was going to slow down and um, prices were going to decline. But according to all the real estate agents that I've talked to, their business is booming, absolutely booming. Now, why? All right. So if you're excited about this video, crush up the likes and let's talk about this. I also have links to real estate agent and loan qualification in the description along with living in Arizona store that you can check out. So here's the main reason. People are leaving cities like New York, uh, San Francisco, Chicago because rent is so high. So yes, they are getting laid off. People are getting laid off. But instead of uh, sticking around and paying that sky high San Francisco rent, that sky high Los Angeles rent, California prices, they're getting fed up and they're like, I'm out of here. They're, they did that in New York. So then you're like, well, OK, they're going to move to Arizona and they're going to get locked down and all that stuff's going to happen. Well, they're still finding it to be worth their while to come to Arizona and make that big move. And one of the other things that's really driving this is the job market. So jobs are really kicking butt and taking names out here in Arizona. And uh, because of that, um, we've got people in tech, people in finance, people in construction, people in real estate. They're all wanting to come here and uh, be a part of the, the boom that's happening in Phoenix. There's three counties basically in play here. Pino County, Maricopa County, which is mostly where Phoenix is, and then uh, Pima County, which is where Tucson is. And so those three counties right there are really seeing the big pickup in um, all this kind of growth and things that people really like. Now, what el who else is driving this? retirees. So retirees, they're done with the cold. They're done with the snow. They're going to warmer climates. They're going to Florida. They're going to Texas. They're going to Arizona. And <laughs> they're just coming to Arizona. And, uh, you know, Arizona just keeps selling homes. And some of the other reasons that uh, Phoenix or Arizona continues to move, uh, boom is because of the uh, people are sick and tired of what's been taking place in their cities. I hear this all too often. They want to get the heck out of that city because of the way the government is being run. And they think that the grass is greener in the, on the other side in Arizona. And then they get here and they're like, whoa, I thought I was running away from this. I thought you guys were um, become, were a lot more uh, freedom loving, you know, because people want to come here and they want to, they like the fact that Arizona is an open carry state. They can carry a firearm on their side hip. Uh, they can pretty easily get a firearm. Uh, so that's still the case today, but they get into these big cities and then they realize that in the big cities, it's not too much different than the city that they were le leaving. So um, that's that's one big thing. Also, Arizona is becoming really popular for outdoor activities uh, because of social media. There's a few areas on in Arizona that people have just become really excited about exploring the Grand Canyon area down in Havasupai, which is closed right now. Antelope Canyon, the wave, that wave uh, rock up in northern Arizona. They also like the outdoors in Arizona. So the outdoors in Arizona is actually becoming a big, uh, a big thing. Some of the disadvantages, though, that you have to keep in mind, it's hot in the summers. <laughs> I mean, right now, uh, you know, we've talked about this a few times, but it's pretty hot. So should you be considering moving here, even though uh, the prices are still going up? So home prices are not really sliding like you would anticipate. Now, uh, that's going to be up to you because I keep hearing people asking, hey, Jeff, is now a good time to move? Should I move to Arizona right now? I heard it's uh, out of control over there with the uh, COVID cases, this and that. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that for you. But uh, yeah, let me answer some of these questions. Uh, Noel says, I wish some of the jobs would spill over to New Mexico. Did you move to New Mexico, Noel? Um Janil says, I'm contemplating Sedona or Prescott. Nice. Prescott's really nice. Sedona's a little bit more expensive than Prescott, but Prescott's pretty expensive too. Uh, Arizona is growing market, real estate, weather, et cetera. Yes, it is, says DLP. 
Daniel, love Arizona, love Phoenix Metro. It's perfect to live in. Yep. The negotiator says more corporations are moving into Arizona, more affordable, business friendly. Yeah. And someone was even saying that one of the things that's really pushing them out of New York, this person was in New York and he said he just can't handle it anymore. He said, um, because people are leaving the big cities. The big cities are like, people are trying to get out of the big cities. They're trying to go out. Um, and when they're choosing to go out, they're not choosing to go like 100 miles, 200 miles out of the big cities. They're choosing to go to a whole nother area, like a whole nother state. And so that's kind of what's happened. And then um, Sharon says, good jobs and beautiful weather. Definitely. Sammy says, outdoors for sure. Sedona, Grand Canyon and Lake Powell are amazing places to go on the, the weekend. Obviously, don't forget about uh, Lake Havasu City. <laughs> you know, uh, we're not too far away from Vegas, um, but right now Vegas is on uh, pretty much closed down. So it's not really worth it to go there. Uh, Eve says, I'll be moving to Gilbert, Arizona next year. Bye bye, New Jersey. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of people coming from back east, New Jersey, New York. People are just leaving that whole area. They say high taxes, uh, extremely restrictive governance, uh, high, high cost of living. I mean, to live in downtown Manhattan is expensive and it's really kind of raggedy. It's run down. It's not like modern like we have here. What's going on, Princess Michelle? Michelle. Oh, Michelle, you changed your uh, screen name. How's it going? Uh, she lives up in Anthem. She says she likes Anthem, which is in North Phoenix. Jayla says, I'll take Arizona 114 degrees weather over a southern state, humidity and heat any day. Are you here right now, Jayla? And then Anthony says, thank you for all your recommendations on Ahwatukee Foothills. It is a hidden gem. Yeah, uh, if you guys are thinking about moving to Arizona or Phoenix in particular, and you're kind of looking for a hidden gem, I've referred people to Ahwatukee a few times. But... <laughs> If I keep referring people to Ahwatukee at some point, I'm going to have to find a new hidden gem because that one's going to get, you know, elevated, I guess. I mean, if people keep going to Ahwatukee, but some of the other hidden gems that you may consider is like Los Sendis up in North Mesa, uh, which is a really nice area. I've obviously talked about Fountain Hills, made a video the other day. I talked about Gold Canyon, if you don't mind being a little bit further outside of it all. There's obviously Desert Ridge, which is one of my favorite areas in North Phoenix. Then there's Vistancia all the way up in Peoria. If you like West Phoenix, there's Verado. If you like Goodyear, Goodyear's got some good stuff for people. And then even around Gilbert, which is probably the most popular one, Gilbert always seems to be the most popular destination for people because it's far enough, far enough out. It's got good schools and it's uh, it's really modern. It's brand new. Some people were joking around. They call it Little Provo, <laughs> Little Provo, Utah. Now, why would they call it that? Because there's a lot of members from the LDS church out here. They also have a big temple uh, in Gilbert. So if you're an LDS, that's why that's why they call it uh, Little Provo. <laughs> Actually, they call Queen Creek, uh, Mesa. Well, Mesa is kind of like it's a, it's the largest suburb in America. So, I mean, I guess it would it, it's in a league of its own. It's got 500,000 people. But Gilbert, Queen Creek and Santan Valley is what they're referring to, essentially. Um. Yeah, a lot of people are coming down. See, there's like three areas that are really booming in Phoenix, I would say. East Phoenix from Mesa, which is East Mark, another hidden gem. East Mark's great. It's just it's just in a flat land area right next to Mesa uh, Williams Gateway Airport. And then uh, Queen Creek, Santan Valley is booming, obviously. Definitely booming out here. And then you got Goodyear. Goodyear is another area, but that's on West Phoenix. Buckeye, Goodyear is booming. And then North, Northwest, you've got Peoria, and then you've got towards like I-17, you've got some stuff growing around Happy Valley. And then Scottsdale, I'm not really seeing too much growth in Scottsdale right now. Scottsdale's kind of, I mean, it's it's like they're building up the Mayo Clinic, but that's all I'm really seeing. And then obviously, how's it looking out there in uh, Anthem? Sabuka says, I hope the state of Arizona gives you a 100% tax write-off. <laughs> yeah, I highly doubt it. I don't think so. I actually had to pay them... Taxes this year, a lot of money. Well, a lot of money to me. I mean, over a thousand dollars. So um, that's a lot to pay a state. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you got to pay. You got to pay the piper, right? Um, Big G R R says moving to Buckeye in October. Oh, I can't wait to get out of this. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you're in Seattle, Washington. I've heard that uh, people are really trying to get out of the PNW Pacific Northwest. Uh, Portland and Seattle, I heard, are just really uh, disenfranchised. I heard the people there are not very happy. 
But one of the things that we've got to be careful that happens in Phoenix is that the housing market prices do go up, thanks to the 40 people who crushed up the likes, by the way, because I wonder how many of those people in Portland and Seattle are upset because the cost of living got, went up on them. And maybe that's why they, uh, they're they out there burning down their own city. I mean, Portland, the stuff that I was seeing in Portland here recently, uh, these, these, these are people who've been protesting, uh, young people mostly, out there for 50 days now, over 50 days they've been protesting uh, about just basically their disgruntlement. They're, they're upset with the government. And uh, the mayor seems to be allowing it and whatnot, but the people that are t coming to me, they're saying they got to get the heck out of there because they're burning down their whole city. They put graffiti all over the walls, this and that. And, you know, maybe they have a legitimate reason to be upset, but uh, people, not everyone's upset and pissed off. So, you know, it's kind of like, I put it like this, I say, you know, if you have an apartment building, right, let's just say you live in an apartment complex and the manager of that apartment complex functions like an HOA. They've got to make sure that the that the play, the, the, the grounds stay clean, that they still stay well manicured and that, you know, there's noise ordinances in place, you know, no loud music after nine o'clock. Well, OK, so if that if that uh, uh, property manager isn't doing that, upholding the, uh, you know, the, the the guidelines of the community, people might say, hey, they get this community manager out of there. They're not doing a good job. Well, in a city, the mayor does the same thing. They're the city manager. And so if people are out at one o'clock in the morning throwing Molotov cocktails and graffitiing all over public streets and stuff on the city hall and whatnot, <laughs> maybe it's time the mayor's got to go because they have no control over the community. So same thing, just like if you were in an apartment complex that's your community, but on the on the larger scale, it's your city. So uh, that's why people want to get the heck out of uh, Portland and Seattle, because the managers of those cities have lost control. Now, what do I know? I'm not there, so maybe they haven't lost control. But that's what people are telling me. They say it's just chaos over there. They say it's not a pleasant place to live, and they're hoping to find greener pastures over in Phoenix. But I'm just hoping that we don't end up in that situation where we're being overrun by, you know, these people basically destroying our city. Because, you know, it's a, no one wants to live in a destroyed city, do you? I mean, you've seen what happens in Syria. I mean, Syria is unlivable right now, and I, I don't know if America will ever get to that point, but those are the kind of things that we have to uh, be aware of, uh, is that we want to take care of our community. We want to make sure people are happy. There's justice for people. People are treated fairly. That's the most important thing. I think fair treatment of all is really important, you know, because when people aren't treated very fair, they get upset and then they start, you know, hurting things, destroying things. So uh, I don't know what happened up there in the Pacific Northwest. I've never really lived there. It's too cold for me. <laughs> beautiful winter or beautiful springs in Portland now. Um, Jayla says Avondale isn't bad, but it's kind of urban like Tolleson. It depends on which area in Avondale. So there you go, Avondale. Um, Scott says, I worry about a big economic collapse. That's always on the, uh, it's always a possibility. I think everyone's kind of worried about that. Um, Michelle, Princess Michelle says, we've seen a few uh, for sale signs. I think it's really competitive. Yeah, I in my neighborhood here, I saw two or like, kind of like two months ago, I saw like two or three uh, for sale signs, but just as soon as they went for sale, they sold and then someone came in. So one of the other things to keep in mind is there's a high demand for, for people moving here. So they need more homes. They don't have enough inventory. So there's low inventory, high demand, supply and demand applies to that, right? And then also what's also happening is there's a labor shortage. So these companies, they can't really build it fast enough because they can't find help. So if you're into construction, this might be a good time to come out to Arizona because there is still such a construction boom that's taking place and they can't really find uh, helpers out here. So uh, if you're into uh, electricity, uh, excavations, heavy equipment operators, carpenters, plumbers, those are the kind of things that are really in demand to these, uh, these companies, especially if you're a GC. If you're a general contractor, also laborers, they need to find laborers. They don't have enough laborers out here. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of one of the uh, major problems that we have going on. 
And then uh, Mega Chris says, Arizona, just common sense. People love the state and fair treatment. Get along. We all get along good. Arizona people called respect. It's good to respect everybody. I mean, you know, it, people make mistakes. Uh, just don't just if you if, if some if your neighbor tells you, hey, we don't do it like that over here. You know, be respectful and say, OK, I'll uh, I'll work on making some adjustments, you know, and then make the adjustments. That's that's kind of how it is. That's what respect is. We realize no one's perfect. People are going to come here. They got they've got to have be given leeway to, uh, you know, learn, learn how it is to live out here. So um, but, you know, again, if you're respectful, uh, even when you make a mistake or whatever, you know, what, what could be a possible mistake? I don't know. Um, flooding your neighbor's yard because you're, you forgot to turn off the hose. Who knows what the case is? We have a, we have a scarcity of water out here in Arizona. So maybe that's uh, something big, right? First time I'm catching the live vid. Good job on your channel, says G-Web. Thank you, man. Thanks to everyone who crushed up the likes, 55 people. Like I said, there is links in the description to, for, uh, to fill out real estate agent and also get pre-qualified for a loan. And then there's the Living in Arizona store, which I know you guys want to shop around and get some of that Arizona uh, gear, right? Um, Matthew says, I worked in Arizona last year. It was hot, never, or water never tasted so good. Yeah, when it's really hot out here, man, you call you slam down an ice cold like Dasani or Aquafina. Like that, it, actually, for some reason, Aquafina and Dasani, when it's like ice cold, and you just, I mean, you could go through two of those in one sitting. At least I do. I also drink these, but if you don't drink enough water and you drink a lot of these or caffeine, you do get a headache because uh, you get dehydrated. So especially if you're doing like physical activity outside and you're drinking a Red Bull and you forgot to drink water, you'll notice a headache will creep up on you. Also, another thing that causes headaches out here is the barometer, the barometric, barometric pressure from the monsoons. So that high pressure atmospheric uh, weather system will cause uh, sinus congestion and, and, and nasal cavity uh, issues that eventually lead to a, a like a sinus headache. So those are things that you kind of can get out here. I would say if you uh, typically, if you drink enough water, you shouldn't be too affected by that. Uh, what's my electricity bill? So my electricity bill completely depends on how cool I keep my house. If I keep my house around about 74, okay, which is actually, believe it or not, 74 could be kind of hot. I mean, it's kind of warm. It's not exactly ideal. Like 72 is the sweet spot, to be honest with you, if you want a comfortable uh, place. But it's around about 250 to $300, depending on what temperature you're running it at. Um, but, you know, obviously, if you're at work and you don't have your AC on and you keep the house at 78, hey, you'll probably be coasting around about 180 to 200, depending on how energy efficient your house is. You know, George says, hey, Jeff, when was the last monsoon? We've been having a little bit of monsoon um, buildup. Today, I, I mean, there were some clouds that were building up. They looked a little gray. They looked like they were moving in, but then uh, the sun came out and completely destroyed that monsoon buildup. We've had a little bit of monsoon here in the Phoenix metro area, nothing really to write home about. A little rain, like scattered rain showers off and on, maybe once every two weeks or maybe once every week, but we haven't had like a real monsoon yet. So um, we're kind of waiting on that. I checked the uh, Weather Channel because I use the Weather Channel's app. I don't know if you guys are looking for a good app, but I do recommend the Weather Channel. Um, I, it's the one that says by IBM, they got, because they got, they got all everything broken down by day, by hour, all that jazz gives you live updates. I even paid for, I think I even paid for the nine ninety nine for the whole year or something like that. I liked it that much because I was using the Apple one, the, the standard Apple one. And I was like, this is okay. It's not the best. And then I've used the Noah one, but the weather channel app is pretty good. I checked on it. It was saying like the highest chance we have for rain, I think one day next week, 30%. Uh, but some days are like 10 to 20%. I think today was like a 10% day for rain. Tomorrow's like a 0% day. Now, let me just say this. The weather guys are not always right. I've seen it to where they said 0% chance of rain. And we get the most popping rain, thunderstorm, monsoon that we had all season on a day when they weren't even predicting rain. So just because they say it doesn't mean it's necessarily true, you know? Um, yeah, anyway. Also on my other channel, if you guys haven't already saw... I did make a video on uh, preppers items for your garage, SHTF. Oh, 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 what's going on here? So I'm going to show you guys the link to that. If you guys haven't already seen that, that's things to have in your garage on my other channel. 
So what kind of tools you got in there? You got, I got a Baofeng radio. Why would you need a Baofeng radio? Well, watch the video and you'll find out. Um, I've got solar, solar. I'm a big fan of solar. Backup water. Um, but anyway, lots of tools to have in your garage out here in Arizona. For those of you who are getting a garage, um, these are things that you should have around. Anyways, Rio Rico, Rio Rico. I love that name. I should move to a place just so I could have my postal address, Rio Rico. Um, let me take, I, you know, Rio Rico. Yeah, Rio Rico. Let me see if I can remember where Rio Rico is. Uh, for some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's south by Tucson, but let me see if I can. Uh, ah, Rio Rico. They got Rio Rico Mexican food down in uh, Mesa is what it's called, Mexican Grill. Okay, but Rio Rico, Arizona. Yeah, it's down there by, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, man, what the heck? It's on the other side. If you're going to Rio Rico, um, you're going to have the coolest mailing address that I'm envious of because I like that name. It looks like there's some developments taking place in Rio Rico. It's definitely close to the border. I think that's the one that's down there by Nogales. So uh, I would imagine that people who are working or living in Rio Rico are probably people who work for the Border Patrol. So I would imagine, is that, are you working for some sort of FEMA or border agency? Veronica? Um, the Dirty Knobs. Is it in offering drone deliveries? In and out? Oh, man. No, you know what? I did order from DoorDash today. And uh, the lady, the girl who, who dropped off the food, she wrote out a handwritten letter just thankful, thanking me saying thank you for ordering and helping me during these tough financial times, helping uh, put food on my, you know, she, but here's the thing. It was genuine because she hand wrote it in cursive, right? And it was like long. It was like a paragraph. And I was like, you know, hey, if all I got to do is order from these food delivery places like DoorDash or Uber Eats to help, you know, it's convenience for me. I mean, I could stay uh, at the house and they deliver it. It cost me five bucks, right? $5 is what I tip them. Um Hey, she's happy. I'm helping. I'm helping someone, and I, you know, I'm able to get convenience out of it. So, you know, when you're talking about uh, drone deliveries, that's kind of what that's kind of funny. Uh, Michelle says our electric bill was two thirty eight for eighteen hundred square feet with a pool. There you go. And I think that's going to be pretty much standard. Michelle, what do you keep your uh, air conditioner uh, temperature at? Thanks to the seventy four people who crushed up the likes. By the way, uh, Mega Chris says new people to AZ learn how to cope. No laws, manage water, best of luck. That's a nice, well, yeah, that's that's good. So manage the water. You know, we do have scarcity of water. We're in a desert and the water comes in from the Colorado Salt River and the Verde and the Aqua Fria. Aqua Fria. Um, whoa, Michelle, she has it on 78, 79. That's not too hot. 78, 79 in the house. That dang, you, you, you got a good tolerance. You're you're a tough cookie right there. 78, 79. Um, president of the world says buy Nokia stock. Okay. I, you're talking about Nokia or Nikola. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, how much is my water bill? My water bill is about $45. Um, and pretty much the, the way that I water is so your trees, let them go bone dry. So only water like once a week, but when you water, you want it to water to where it floods a little bit, like maybe once every two weeks, especially as they're more mature. If you got big trees once every two weeks, but like let the hose, turn the hose on just very subtly and let it kind of flood. Cause that right there is, um, cause what you want is you want the water to go all the way down to the roots deep. If they just grow shallow roots, then when the monsoon comes, that's how the trees tip over. So if you're watering every day or every other day for 12 minutes with the drip system, those trees aren't getting deep roots. So the whole point of flooding it is to grow, get the water to go all the way down to the deep roots. And that's a healthy, happy tree. And if you let it go bone dry, but by the time you're watering it, that tree is just going to be like so excited. And, and when it goes bone dry, it, it actually expands even more because it's trying to get more uh, water. It's, it becomes thirsty. So it works a little bit harder, but that's why it's really important. Right at that point, you start bringing in the water because if you starve out your tree, dehydrate your tree, it'll, you know, it won't be healthy for it. Thanks to 81 people who crushed up the likes, by the way. 
um, since as the hard water irritates my skin. So what people do for hard water to work around for that is get a water softener. Uh, that's going to be a lot of salt. You know, you got to get one of those Morton bags of rock salt every like, I don't know, two weeks to a month. And that uh, will help you with hard water problems in the, in the house. Outside, you know, you're going to have to deal with that somehow. Mega Chris says some plants do grow without water. Best months is spring and winter time. Yeah. Uh, if you get a desert plant, they're pretty much already got the DNA for uh, the desert. So like a mesquite tree, a Palo Verde tree, if you grow even a palm tree, palm trees are pretty drought tolerant. So getting drought tolerant plants, cactuses. Um, Michelle says we gave a water softening system. Oh, we have a water softener. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks, AD. People who crushed up the likes, like I said, there's links in the description to real estate agent and to a loan officer and to the Living in Arizona store if you guys want to dig around. If not, thanks for watching and subscribing and turning on that bell to get notified when these videos do drop. We'll see you on the next one. Go Cardinals.